Hello, welcome to Creative Canvas. Today I'm gonna to walk you through step-by-step step how to do an acrylic painting on canvas. There's a few things that you're gonna need just to get started. And the first is going to be a canvas. So one of the options would be a nice large canvas, which works, I have some of those. I bought these at Walmart in a six pack. You can find them all over at different places. Or I also have smaller canvases that work just fine. Um, and I have noticed that uh, the dollar store here in Broken Bow, they do carry them a lot of times. They're kind of hit and miss. So they do have this size at the dollar store you could pick up. I also have a canvas board and I have some of these around um, it, my classroom and just around it. You could also sometimes find these at the dollar store or Walmart or anywhere. And it's just a board that's been stretched with canvas. And then if you do not have any of those or if you're at home and you just really want to do this project and I'm going to give you an option of how to make it accessible. So we're going to use, I'm going to show you how to use an empty box. And the reason I chose this is it's kind of got one side that's laminated already, so it holds the paint a little bit better. And then um, it's a little thicker than plain paper. You could use paper, but paper is not going to absorb the moisture that the paint's going to have. Uh, acrylic paint is water soluble, so it is water based. And so it's not going to uh, work as well uh, as something with a little more stability. You could use cardboard or uh, if you have different types of paper, you could use like a watercolor paper. That would work well too. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're doing it for 4-H, you're going to, you have to have your canvases uh, framed and ready to hang when you submit them into for a 4-H project. So if you use something like this to do a painting on, um, I would recommend just throwing a mat around it. And I made sure this one fit, this mat did. Throw a mat around it. Um, and then you can throw it in a picture frame. And most picture frames come ready to hang. And so that kind of takes that step out for you. So it is an option. So don't feel that if you don't have a canvas that you can't do this project. I'm actually gonna, along the way, try to show you lots of different ways to make this accessible to everyone. So your first thing is having your canvas to paint on, whatever, whether or not that's a canvas. And then the second is gonna be what you're gonna paint with. So that one is kind of an interesting one because we're gonna use acrylic paint. And there's tons of options when it comes to acrylic paint. And a lot of people get a little overwhelmed because they don't know what to use. I picked up one of these. This is just Walmart acrylic paint and it's just a set. I don't even know what I paid for it. And I just bought it yesterday actually. That is acrylic paint or paint that is like school type quality that you would see um, that also is acrylic paint or craft paint that comes in different size bottles here. This is also acrylic paint and it will work too. And then lastly is house paint. So if you have a gallon of any color, whether or not it's um, interior or exterior, it really doesn't matter. Acrylic paint will work. Um, I also have smaller amounts of um, paints too. Now, I have a little trick that I do. I like to take my acrylic paints, if I don't have enough to save, or even if I do, <laughs> um, I throw them into containers like these, and then I'm able to squirt them and dispense them out. So these paints are just... They, they're just normal house paint. And so, this just makes it a little easier to dispense. So, all of those are acrylic paints. All of those will work. And the best part is all of them can be used interchangeably for this. Now, as long as this is going inside, if, if you're doing like a barn quilt or some sort of thing that's going to go outside on the front porch, these would fade with it outside. But... If it's going inside, I, you could use any of them and you can make a great painting. The one difference that you will find between some paints, whether or not it's um, house paint or craft paints or art paints, is the sheen. Sometimes you'll have one that'll be shinier than the others. Now, that doesn't bother me. I kind of like it. Um, that will be the only thing. If you used a high gloss paint, 
and then you use like this craft paint that I know is more flat, you would have that difference. But you could use them, you can mix them together, you could do all kinds of fun stuff. And then the next thing you're gonna need is paintbrushes. So your paintbrushes. I have well-loved, well-used paintbrushes that I've used over and over and over. Um, I actually have a whole basket of them. Um, or um, you could buy a set of paintbrushes. I believe this came from Hobby Lobby. I'm pretty sure it came from Hobby Lobby. Uh, you could pick up there. They do also carry some paintbrushes at the local dollar store um, in Broken Bow. So a lot of this stuff can be bought if you don't have it. Now, what size is a brush you need? I like any sort of assorted pad that have pack that have variety. You know, what you can use whatever you have. You will make whatever work. Now, if you are doing a little canvas, you might not have a need of a really big brush. You could use it to do the background. Um, or a bigger brush might work better on a bigger one, but you might want to go down a size for a smaller one. Once again, all preference, whatever you want to use, however long you want to take painting it. And those, I think, well, the other things you should do is something to cover your table. And what I use on my table is just a uh, tablecloth. I get it in like the lawn and garden section. And um, that works really well. And, if you could see my tablecloth, you would see it is covered. It has had lots of fun projects going on it. And then um, the clothes you wear. Uh, acrylic paint is permanent. If you get it on your clothes and you get it washed out with water quickly, you usually can get a good portion, if not all of it out, but it will stain. If it dries in your clothes, it is going to be a permanent thing in there. So um, wear something that if you get paint on it, you're not gonna be super upset about or wear a paint shirt or smock or apron or any of that kind of stuff. I believe that pretty much covers. And then, except for what you're gonna put your paint on. Now, I like to just put my paint on paper plates, styrofoam plates. Uh, to me, it's easier because then when I'm done, I can just throw it away. So I don't, it's a step I don't have to worry about cleaning. Um, I do have some nice, well, if you call dirty things nice, paint trays. Um, you could use a paint tray, but those things are not necessary at all to have really cool artwork. So that is what you need to get started. And um, I'm going to let you guys gather that. I'm going to gather mine. And me and my girls are actually going to start doing multiple paintings. And so we're going to be able to show you an example of it on a big canvas, an example on a small canvas, an example of it, how we're going to do it with the um, Diet Mountain Dew box and show you how they all are going to turn out with different things. And we're going to use a variety of all the paints that I showed you. And we're going to really just show you how no matter what you have, you can make this really awesome. So have fun, go gather your materials, press pause, and come on back here and I'll show you the next step. I wanted to really quick show you guys how we're going to make the pop box work as a canvas. So I'm going to, I first cut it out and made sure it would fit this frame that I originally fit it for. And then I taped it down with blue painter's tape. And so it was nice and solid down so it won't curl up and roll. And then I'm gonna give it to Ray over here and she's going to paint a couple coats of paint. Okay, I have already done that. And I had one of my girls who did a first coat of paint on it. And you can see, you can still see through it a little bit because it is a pretty bold pattern. They have chose, they're going to do a blue and black background. So you can choose any background at all that you want to do on it. Um, any color will work. And I want to explain to you how that works. We are going to have, between us three girls, we're going to have a blue and back, black background. We're going to have a green and blue background. And then we're going to have a really bright, fun one that I think is going to be yellow or pink or one of those bright, fun colors. And I'm just going to show you the difference and how they're all going to turn out and be successful, but they're just going to have a different look to them. All right, as you can see here, Ray has started painting some blue on this canvas as she just squirted the paint directly onto the canvas and she's just moving it around. 
Make sure if you're doing a canvas that you do the edges all the way around also. Now what they, she's going to do while she works on this one is she's going to add an extra color and just mix the colors together. Once we're done painting all the canvases, we'll just take the paintbrushes and put them in some water. All right, we have everything painted for our background, so I'm going to show you what we've done. We have done four different ones, so we have quite a variety and examples. First one, this is the pop box, and I just did black and blue and kind of did an ombre, so it fades from one color to the next. And then, Ray, you want to show one of yours? Um, this is one of mine, and I did blue, and it... it Sort of faded down to a green. Yep, and she did hers a little more painterly, so you can see the brush strokes. So it's not like quite a smooth transition. It's a little more painterly. And then Ray, can you show the pink one down there? Uh, this is one, the and um, it is pink and purple. And then we have a pink and purple one that is kind of at an angle where it has pink and purple both in it. This one also is done a little more painterly, so don't worry about getting all your brush strokes smoothed out. Some of that extra um, division of color is actually really successful. So, and then our last one is AJ. This one is a yellow and a green, which kind of is all yellow at the top and then fades into yellow, which is kind of green at the top and fades into yellow. and. Like my mom said, it's more painterly and it's not a smooth transition. All right, so we have our backgrounds done to paint our backgrounds. We just use an assortment of these bigger brushes just so to make quick work of the background. Um, on some of the smaller ones, we did go down a size on brushes, but like I said earlier, there is no right or wrong way to do it. Just whatever you have, make work. Um, you could even use a really large brush for the background if you wanted. But I do want to remind you, if you are doing a canvas, do not forget to do the edges. Now, there is tricks on fixing it later on. If you needed to, if you forgot, you could paint the edges black. You could also just put a frame around it. But I always say, paint the edges because then you have a lot more options later. So once it is all painted and you are good to go, you have to decide which way you want your composition to go. Now your composition simply means um, the layout. So this one is almost a square, kind of rectangular-ish. So I can decide if I want the blue on the bottom or if I want it on the side or if I want it on the, the black on the bottom. Now I'm going to choose on this one to put black on the bottom. And then the girls are going to kind of rotate. And sometimes this is a good time to take it to a mirror and just hold it up in front of the mirror and look at it because you get to step back and see it. And they get to choose which one they want on the top, which one on the bottom. Now, for me, I'm doing black on the bottom because I want, like, that's going to be the grassy area. And so it's going to be a little darker and then it's going to get lighter as it goes up. Now, that we could do it opposite of that and that would be fine. But that is just my way of thinking on how I'm choosing mine. So I'm going to let them pick theirs. And then once that is done, we get to start laying out the composition. So we have got our picture plane picked. Picture plane means this is done. It is set. I know what I'm going to do. Now I get to choose um, my placement. All right, once they are painted, it is time to start doing the layout of your dragonflies. So there's a couple ways to get started. One, I recommend just taking a blank piece of paper and practice drawing a dragonfly and seeing if, just kind of working out the issues early. And then I drew a dragonfly, if you can see it very well. It's awfully bright down here, the light. Um, but I drew my dragonfly just to make sure kind of size-wise. Now you could, at that point, um, Cut it out and put it on and trace it. You could do a couple of them and you could trace it and that would just kind of be your template. I always tell kids, I don't want them to trace work, but if it's your own work that you're tracing, then it's totally fine because you're just replicating what you have already done. So once that is, you can do it that way or you can take chalk, 
which I also really like because once you draw on it with chalk, you, so once you draw on it with chalk, you can just wipe it off if you don't like it. Or you can just use any pencil. I have a mechanical here. You can use a roll pencil. You can use whatever you want it to draw. All right. So now you're going to start drawing your dragonflies. So I'm going to try to draw one fairly big so you guys can see it on camera while I'm doing it. I'm going to use chalk just because I think you'll be able to see the white a little bit better than you would the pencil. And like I said, my composition is going to be black on the bottom, blue on the top. I'm just going to start with the center part of the dragonfly. So I wanted to do, this is like the back, the spine. I don't know if they have a spine. I'm pretty sure they don't. And then into the tail. So a dragonfly is pretty long and skinny. I'm going to give it a slight arch. So it's not a perfectly straight line, just slightly arched. And that makes it look like it's kind of flying. Then in the top portion, up towards the top, I'm going to add a single wing. All right, and then I'm going to replicate it and do the same thing on the other side. Now your dragonflies can fall off the page. There's no right way. Those dragonflies, I always remember as a kid being at the pool and dragonflies always came to our pool and they'd fly around and I always thought they were really pretty. I always thought they were going to bite me. I don't know if they do, but I was always afraid they were. And then you're going to do a second wing underneath, directly underneath it, just slightly shorter on this one. All right, so we are going to do our best to make it symmetrical. Symmetrical means if you cut it down the middle, it was the same on both sides. So like a face is symmetrical. It's the same on both sides. So a dragonfly is symmetrical from this angle. And this is the angle we're going to do ours for today. Unless you want to try something different, and you are more than welcome to. You are the artist. You have control. Now, if it is not symmetrical, that's okay. This is chalk. You can simply wipe it off and go back in and fix things. Now, mine is not completely symmetrical. Some of it I will fix later on with paint, and some of it I'll do a little finessing now. So this is the basics of a dragonfly. It's pretty simple. Now I'm going to decide if I want to do another one here, another one on this side, this side, how I'm going to do. So I'm going to work on drawing my dragonflies and filling up my composition and the girls are going to work on theirs and I, we will show you our finished products. The three of us have drawn our dragonflies. And so we're going to show you how different they all look. So mine is three dragonflies, two going this way, one going this way. There, I did a variety of sizes. I did a bigger guy, a medium, and a smaller, and I also had a slight overlap. I didn't do it on purpose, but it happened, and I decided I actually think it's going to be really interesting. So now, Ray. Um, I made... All them, all the small ones going uh, like this way, up. and then the big one is going down. Yes, yeah, so she had, she had four. She did two different sizes. She kind of did three small, one large, and she also has them flying different directions, which I thought was a really unique, fun thing to do. And hers is a little hard to see, but you can, yeah, it looks pretty good. I did two dragonflies, both going the same direction, but in two different sizes. And she also, one thing that I thought was neat about hers is she left negative space. So she left a lot of negative on this area where there's just nothing at right now. Later on we'll fill it, but sometimes that is a really good thing to leave. It just kind of gives a little breath. It gives a little place of rest in a painting. So I thought that was a very successful one. 
We also used this pink and purple one, and we did a large dragonfly covering most of the canvas, flying up. Okay. And so we just wanted to show an example of just doing one. So sometimes simple is the best way to go. And so we really just did a variety to really show you that whatever you do will be great. And you can also tell that the three of us draw our dragonflies differently, and that's okay. Now is the fun part. Now we're going to start adding the color onto our dragonflies to make them really pop. So we're going to paint dragonflies and then kind of a grass. So think about what colors you would like to use for your dragonfly in grass. I have a trick. Now, your background color, if you pick a color opposite the color wheel from your background color, that is going to make your dragonflies pop the most. So when doing that, you are going to want to use um, the opposite color. Now, I'm also going to encourage everyone to use a little white if you have it. White is just a good color to mix in things. It adds more contrast. So you're going to use white and the opposite color. I'm going to pop up a picture here of the color wheel and show you what I mean, what the color wheel looks like. If you need to freeze it, um, you can hit pause and you can look at it and decide which colors would work best for you. So I'm going to give you a couple examples. This one here, blue is the color. So opposite blue on the color wheel is orange. So if I pick orange colors to go in my dragonflies, it's going to make my dragonfly pop the most. Now, I, I'm not required to do orange. Um, if I don't like orange, I don't have to do orange at all. Uh, but using orange would really make it pop. Now, I could use a variation of orange. I could use a yellow orange. I could use a red orange, which red also could be pink. I could use corals. I could use any of those bright colors to really make it pop and jump off the page. So if I was going to use the pink one, um, pink and purple are, um, it's like red and purple on the color wheel. So if I wanted to use the color opposite of red, it would be green. And if I wanted to use the color opposite of purple, that would be yellow. So if I used yellow and green on it, it would really make my dragonfly pop and be really neat. For instance, well actually we're gonna jump over here. We're gonna go to this one because this is the exact opposite of what I just said. This one is yellow and green. So if I make my dragonfly pink and purple on this one, it's going to really pop. Where if I make my dragonfly yellow and green on this one, it's going to really pop. So that's kind of neat. We didn't plan that, but happy accident. And then on this one, it is green and blue. So we already said the opposite of blue is orange and the opposite of green is red. So I could use oranges and reds. And like I said earlier, you don't have to use those true colors. You can use variations. You can use pinks and um, corals and bright oranges and dark oranges or whatever, or even something just close to it. But if I made green dragonflies on this painting, the dragonflies wouldn't pop as much because it would be more muted. Now, that's not bad if that's what you want, but just keep that in mind. If you really want that high contrast, opposite color wheel is great. So like I said, I'm going to have the color wheel here. Um, and so if you just want to hit pause to study it for a second, you sure may. It is now time to start painting. So you're going to have to pick out which paintbrush is going to work best for your dragonfly. Now, to get started, I am going to use two sizes of brushes. Um, I'm going to use a small, little, flat one. And then I'm going to use this that's a long, skinny, round brush. This type of brush is my favorite type of brush. Um, it actually gets really nice when you put it in water. Tip it in. You get a really nice, clean tip on it. And it is my favorite brush by far to use. So um, I do recommend a small round if you have it. And then if you have flat brushes, just go with the smallest size flat brush you have. Both of them will work fine. So I'm gonna start with my round one. Um, most of my dragonflies are fairly small because my canvas is little. Now I'm gonna use my paints. Now we talked about paint colors. So what I'm going to do on mine is um, these colors right here, the white, this is a yellow orange, and this is a yellow, are the colors I'm going to use in my dragonfly. 
Um, and then I also added on, so the colors in my background. So since I used two colors in my background, I used the blue and the black. I put those on my tray also because I'm going to incorporate those in. And then I also added green because I am going to do grass. Now you could use lots of different colors of green. I just chose a real bright green and we're going to see how that works. I'm thinking I might add a dark green in if I need to. All right, I'm going to try to work from this angle and see if it makes sense. So our first step is going to be adding in a little of the background grass. So I'm going to use the colors that are already in my background. So here is the black and the blue. And I'm just going to make little wispies with those colors into my background. Now, they don't have to be perfect. They can overlap. They can connect to the bottom if they want, but they're just going to be a little wisp and they're going to have a slight turn to them as they go. Now, they um, are the little trick with this paintbrush. If you go quick, you can get a smoother one. A lot of times if you go really slow, your hand starts getting jagged. Or if you make a nice quick swipe through it, a lot of times that will help make it a smooth transition. Now, um, I don't always wash my brush in between things. Sometimes I like where my paints mix. So this is an example of where I'm gonna let my paints mix. So I'm gonna go into my black paint right now. I'm gonna scoop this over so you guys hopefully can see that. I'm gonna go directly into some of my black paint and I'm just going to add swipes of it and it's going to be kind of a blue black and some of these lines might not show and that's okay. And like I said, you can overlap over top of the chalk or pencil lines that you have for your um, dragonflies. Then once I get that base and that's just kind of my background. That is going to be the grass that's further away. And a lot of that's going to get hidden later when I add my next step on. So we're going to move on to the dragonflies. If your grass is super wet at this point, you're, you can take a break, walk away for a little bit, go grab a snack, and let your grass dry. Since you're not in a hurry, we're not on time restraint, that we have that flexibility to do it. So once it is dry, most of mine didn't overlap. So I'm going to just move on. I'm going to use those three colors that I said were my contrast. So my contrast of blue was orange. So I chose an orange, a yellow, and then a white. And I'm going to use those three colors. This time I am going to wash my paintbrush really good. I'm going to rinse it off really nice. And then if you have a paper towel, you can just wipe it on your paper towel. And then I'm going to dip into one of my colors. And I'm just gonna choose white right now. And I'm gonna do this top butterfly up here. And I'm gonna paint in his wing. Now, I really like mixing my colors and letting my colors mix. Uh, I love that painterly look where it's just not perfect. So I would not worry about trying to get yours perfect. And the chalk, I actually am wanting to go inside my chalk lines for now. I am not wanting to go outside of my chalk lines because those chalk lines, once things are dry, I'll just wipe right off and they aren't even there. If you used pencil, you're not gonna have such thick lines. Your lines will be much thinner, so you won't have that problem. So once I have my white on, I am going to pick another color. And for this one, I think I'm gonna go to the orange. And I'm not washing my brush. And I'm just going to kind of add a division. So I'm gonna pick the top side of my dragonfly wings, or bottom side, depends which way you're looking at it. For me, it's my bottom, but to you, it's the top. And I'm just going to add that and it's just going to add a little extra contrast and then I'm going to 
go to my yellow. Once again, I'm not washing my brush. I just kind of let it mix on my palette. I always think palettes turn into their own work of art later on. And I'm gonna just put in some other colors at the base and just kind of smear it in. The reason I chose dragonflies were because dragonflies, if you ever look at them, are like metallic and they're multicolored and there's a lot of different colors in them. And I really wanted this project to be a project that you guys could do wherever you were at with whatever supplies you had. for it to dry and AJ actually came up with a great little thing here we put use paint um, our paint trays were just plastic bowl or plates and so she actually just made us a little lid so that way they wouldn't dry out while we were gone which worked perfect we have painted our dragonfly wings so this is what we have so far now this is fine this is by yellow or the yellow and orange ones this is one that is yellow and green. There is, these are pinks and oranges and reds. And these are purples and pinks. Purples and pinks. So we are going to wash the chalk off. So if you use chalk, you're just gonna simply take a paper towel. I just dip mine in my water. You can use clean water if you want. And then you're just going to wipe it off around the wings. Now I am still going to leave that center line there that's like the tail. But so it just kind of cleans it up. It's not perfect, but it cleans it all up. So we're going to start working on the body of our dragonflies. And you're going to go back and use the same paintbrush you were already using. And then also, I'm going to use a brand new pencil that has a good eraser on it. It works really well to get perfect dots. And if any of you guys have taken my classes before in the past, you know I love the back end of a pencil. So this is what I'm going to use together. I'm gonna move my camera down and so you can kind of watch me work and I'll just walk you through what I'm doing. Right. So now I am going to start adding more onto the body. So there's a couple different ways you can do it and I'm going to show you, um, I'll, I'll show you on two different canvases how I'm going to do it. So on this one I'm going to just simply use that paintbrush that I was using in the past and I'm going to pick a color doesn't really matter which one it is, if it's um, one of my oranges or my yellows or my white, you can pick whichever one you want. And I'm going to go just slightly above where it starts, where the wings start. And then I'm going to go down. And I'm going to do the same kind of technique that I did with my grass, where I kind of quickly and then less pressure as I come up. That helps make it so it's thicker where you have more pressure and then thinner where the pressure goes away. So I'm going to really pump that up a little bit and then thicken it up here. Less pressure as I go until I get a nice little point at the end. Now, Anytime your brush starts doing goofy things, just get a little a little bit of water, not a lot, because you don't want it to run. And that will help line your bristles back up and so they aren't all wonky and crazy. Now, I do not wash my brush while I'm doing this. I let the colors kind of meld together 
and just kind of form and make little transitions of the same color. Now I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to use some brighter colors on this one. And so I'm going to go just slightly above. Slide down. Then you can nice tapered little tail there. Get wider as it comes up, a little thicker. Now this is one technique that you can do. It is definitely not the only. If you want to do separations of the body, you sure can. There is um, lots of different, I did a little research on them to see exactly how they were shaped. Um, and I thought this was just an easy, straightforward method that you guys can do. I'll come back and do this little guy a little bit. But I'm going to switch paintings out real fast. I'm going to switch to this guy. I'm going to clean my brush out. It is yellow and green, which is the color I'm going to use for my grass on the other painting. So I have it on this tray already. And I'm going to use those colors. I'm going to start the same way. I'm just going to go slightly above it. And then taper on down. And I'm going to go right across this grass. And To a nice point at the end, like I said, add more water when you need your bristles to line back up. Add white. Okay, so right now, this one looks like the other one did, where it's just kind of a straightforward line. But I'm going to add a little extra into this one. This is where my pencil is going to come into play. And I'm going to just add texture. It's going to kind of give a little bit of an implied division between the parts of the dragonfly's main body. So I'm going to dip in the same colors that I did on my uh, wings. So I'm going to just dip into white and yellow. And I, like I said, love when my colors mix. So I'm gonna just give it a nice round spot right there. And this works really well. And then I could stop if I wanted to stop at that or I could keep adding. So I'm going to keep adding. And I'm gonna add a little green into it, a little and it really makes a neat um, combination of colors when it hits through there. And then I'm going to add a little more white. And you can always come back in if you have one that you just aren't crazy about and add a little more onto it. And then I'm going to just go until it fades out. And then I'm going to let the end of the tail just kind of drag on. So that is another fun way. And this white here is just chalk, which I will wipe off in a little bit when it's done. Now, you can do this in any sort of way that makes sense to you. But these are just some of the techniques you could do that I have found work really well. Now, if you wanted to smooth out some of these spots, or blend colors together, you could. Um, and then I, this color to me doesn't cover as well, so I'm gonna just do a second coat on some of these. And that is my dragonfly. So once again, I'm going to let my dragonfly dry, and then I'm gonna come back in and I'm going to do a few more little things to make the dragonfly really pop. And then I'm going to add some more grass and then we will be done. 
Now everything is dry and we are going to focus back on adding a few more details. Now, um, mine stayed pretty separate on my um, wings, but in certain spots, they kind of mush together. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna try to move this so you guys can see the light. Make sure so it's not blown out. And I'm going to just use my white occasionally to kind of divide if there's spots, and, and I, you don't need to do a full outline. I wouldn't recommend doing a full outline. But in some spots, I'm just going to define them. Now, I'm using white. You could use white, or you could use one of the colors that's already in there. And that's just going to keep them so it doesn't turn into much. So you can still see four complete separate uh, wings on there. And also you could do the same. This one has a good white highlight down the side. But if you needed to add a white highlight on that, um, I'm going to use white. On this one, it's also a good thing to um, really smooth it out to give a nice... Um, smooth clean edge on there. Um, I could use, I'm going to just switch to different colors so you guys can see. I'm just going to use an orange on this one. And I did like a, every other time I didn't wash my brush out so I have orange and white on my brush. And then I'm going to come back into orange. And I'm going to do a line down there and just add a little bit more contrast on those. And so they just really pop and have a nice clean look to them. Now I'm going to look at this one. Ooh, I can't see that one very well. I guess it's much better in real life. Ah, but it's petals at times kind of morph into one. There's a lot of green in it. I'll take a photo of it and um, show you guys here and you'll get better quality. But I'm going to add some highlights in lime green and yellow and white to really define that to make it really pop. AJ, can I see yours? Yep. I did the little wing dots. Just on one of them though. All right. And AJ's on her wings, she did more of a, um, she kind of did an outline around them that kind of divided them. Um, she did add extra details, like little dots on the wings. And I'll show you Ray's so far. Ray's is much more painterly, which I love. This, this is a style that um, I really like. I think it's really fun. Um, it has, it's more, um, surreal almost, um, impressionist, and I really like that, how it almost looks like you just laid the colors down and left them kind of chunky. So, um, I'm going to do a few more details on mine, and then I'm going to actually start adding grass. So, um, if you wanted to, if you were happy with how it looked at this stage, I need to finish that little guy a little bit, but if I was happy at this stage, I could stop. You could stop at any point. Remember, you are the artist. You are in control. So if I wanted it, to me, it almost looks kind of nightlight at this point. So I could stop and I could be done. Uh, I am going to continue developing it just to show you guys the options. And so um, I have already used blue and I've already used black, which is repeating the two colors I used in my background. And then I'm going to um, use green and white to add more. And I might even add some more um, blue if I choose to. We have finished painting the grass on our paintings and I just want to show you how incredibly different they all are, how they turned out, how we use different things to make them happen, but yet how they all turned out to be so successful. So the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the one I did most examples on today. And it is this one. I added some green grass and some yellow grass and it's just a variety of stuff. And I will take a photo and post these as photos also. So it's a little easier to see the detail. 
And this one, like I said earlier, is actually just on a uh, pop box that we recycle. So don't feel like you need a canvas to make this one happen. And this one, the dark colors and the way we did the strie, the ombre look, really gives an effect of kind of a sky um, or a horizon line, you know, getting di a little distance in it. And then this one is totally different because it is pink, not this dark color. And we only did one on this one and it turned out super good. I was pleased with how it turned out too. And it, it, this one has more surreal colors on it where these aren't colors you find in nature. The sky is not normally pink, but yet it still has a really fun look to it. And the background is more an angle on this one, which is still super successful. And then we use the yellow um, for the dragonfly, which here we also have yellows and oranges. It seems yellows and greens. And, but it's just a different take on it. And so whatever colors you have, you really can make this project work for you at home. And this one was on a canvas board. And this is a pre-bought board that is wrapped in canvas. And then here, this one is on a smaller canvas and it is a yellow background with a little green in it. And this is a little more closer to nature that you would find, um, but it's not exactly. And it's still a really fun, bright, cheery summer one with two small dragonflies. And then she did, um, really took it on and made it her own when she did it. She didn't make, she didn't worry too much about copying mine. She really wanted to have it true to herself, which is awesome. Um, I think whenever a kid thinks that they have the confidence to go off and do their own thing, that is amazing. That means that they're capable of way better. And then the last one is a bigger canvas. And this one is blues and greens, which is a little closer to nature, but then the dragonflies are orange and pink and she used like some magenta in it. And it turned out super cool. The colors and the contrast against it really worked well. And then she did um, where my grasses were more um, straight with a slight curve and she did more wispy grasses and in the bottom, which is great also. So really, the thing I want you guys to take from this is to know that you can make this happen. Whether or not you have a giant canvas, you have a tiny canvas, you have a canvas board, you have a paper or cardboard or whatever it may be, you really can make a really nice painting. And then we used all types of acrylic paint, which I explained to you earlier. And so any type of acrylic paint will work and you can use them interchangeably. We did, we used house paint to um, art quality paint to craft paint. So we really used them all in all of these. So don't, fe don't be intimidated by that. And then um, when it comes time to actually paint the dragonfly and the grass, have fun. Don't think about it too much. I gave you some rules because sometimes people are overwhelmed with options and so they like to have a guideline when I said complementary colors, the, I, the color opposite the color wheel. Um, and that's not a rule. I mean, really, you can do. I believe all rules are made to be broken in art. So um, if it works for you, great. And, use that as a tool, as a jumping off point. But if you really want to add um, whatever color, if I wanted lime green in my dragonflies here, I could do it. It's not that if you don't, if you don't do it my way, it's not like it's not right. It's just not my way and that's okay. Um, remember, you truly are the artist. So have fun. Um, all right, so I hope this video really helped you, give you a little confidence, a little inspiration to go out and make your own art. I cannot wait until the end of the summer when I get to walk to the fairgrounds and check out all the amazing work that you guys do and all the hard work you put into all the projects and your animals and everything you do. So I look forward to seeing it. I look forward to seeing maybe some dragonfly paintings at fair. I hope everyone is staying safe and staying healthy. See ya.